How do you do? I've been trying to make this video all morning and Comcast keeps pooping out on me. So I'm going to try this way. So be patient with me. Mm. All right, I've been trying to make a video to show you how to deal with ginger, turmeric, and lemons in order to preserve them so um, they won't go bad on you. Everybody is freaking out about this pandemic going on and you're, I mean, I went to the grocery store last night and there was no flour. All the shelves that were empty was just amazing. Um, so here are a couple of things that people don't really necessarily think about, but it's helpful and handy and inexpensive. And while everybody's freaking out about that, you can be creating yet another sustainable resource. So first thing we're gonna do is the ginger. Ginger. Um, you, let me see if I can find a whole one. I have one already chopped up. Here we go. So, this is what it normally looks like. I was really lucky and was able to get um, a bag of it, like two pound bag of it, in a sad produce section uh, for three bucks. Of course, I took it home knowing I could preserve it. Now I don't have to buy any kind of ginger product for a while. So I also learned this trick. If you get some of them, then they're starting to go old and nasty. And just like people, they start to get dry and wrinkly. Okay, this one's really kind of nasty, but so if I learned that you can take it and put it in water and it'll sort of rehydrate. So let's stick this over here and see if it works. All right, so on these older ones, just like on um, potatoes, they get these little eyes. Where's the thingy? See, like this little thing right here. It's, um, this one's a better one. You can really see that it's like a little nub, like an eye of a potato. So that we are going to cut off and make like a little seed ginger, like a seed potato. So once you get all of your seed potatoes, uh, seed ginger cut, you're going to want to plant them. And they grow vertically. Because the part that we're going to be using, the part we harvest, is the rhizome or the root. So I have these for my plants. Um, that this year I'm actually trying using uh, grow lights to see if I can get certain things that just didn't have a, a long enough grow time last year to start. And by the time I plant them in the yard, they'll, they'll be almost three months old. So I have this one and I filled it with potting soil and a little extra perlite stuff that this white stuff that helps it keep it drained. So they need to be planted two inches down, which is about the width of this. So you just make a trench, a trench, and you take your little seed thingy, if you can remember what you did with it, and you're going to want to put it, the little eye facing up, and just cover it up and put it in a sunny window. And this may be either something you want to just always grow in the house. You know, you can get like a big flower pot and put a couple in there. Um, or, you know, put them in a cold frame um, around them because we're not tropical. Um, but they can be grown up here. And what you wanna do is when you harvest them, you always wanna leave a piece in the ground so then they will just um, propagate for the next year. So that's pretty easy. The plant is kind of the spindly little plant, and that's okay because that's not the part we need. Um, but you will be able to have, you know, again, your own sustainable resource. So the other thing that you can do with it, as everybody knows, is use it for culinary uses, gingerbread, um, if everybody else is like on that new bandwagon of Asian Korean hot pots and things like that, and Korean barbecue. Ooh, Noah took us to a place in Boston for his birthday and it was really cool. They had these grills on the table and this little curtain over your booth and you were brought all of this really tender meat and you barbecued it yourself. Oh, it was awesome. But anyhow, um, 
So we know about that, right? So we're going to do two things. We're going to cut them into discs, just smaller chunks, and I have them on a cookie sheet in a sunny window. But you can also when uh, put them in the oven after you finish making dinner and you shut the oven off, it's still warm, just stick the cookie sheet in there, leave it overnight. Uh, if you cut them thin enough, it should be done, but you know, the next morning if it's not, just leave them in there. Um, after you finish making dinner that night, put them back in there and that should dry them up. You can grind them. I use my lime machine and I have um, a coffee grinder, but in the interest of hay, what if it really hits the fan and we no longer have electricity, pick one of these up. Now, I saw a bunch of them last year at Rietta, so it's not like they're scarce and they're not expensive. I think they're like, you know, anywhere from two to five dollars. So, um, and if you don't want to do that, order it now, you know, take advantage of the fact that everybody else is ordering toilet paper and order things that you may not even need right now, but it's good to have it around and it's good to know how to use it. And then if you need to, you need to. I actually, this is the only way I make my ginger for cooking. Um, so I just prefer, if I'm capable of doing something, I prefer to do it instead of giving more money to big corporations, um, especially when it comes to like produce, cause you know, it's just such a racket. And you don't even get food that's nutritionally sound anymore. You know, they spray it with that retardant down in Chile and then they drive it up here or fly it up here. And uh, then they spray it with something else to make it um, start ripening again. And then you go, hmm, this tomato doesn't even taste like a tomato. It's just silly talk. And there's so much here that we can take advantage of. So you can dry it and grind it or you can dry it and just... I put it in a canning jar like that. And then if somebody has a belly ache, you just take a couple chunks out, put it in a cup, pour boiling water over it, and the ginger relaxes the stomach and, and it helps with nausea. Um, it's also good as an anti-inflammatory. You can take a couple chunks, take a couple peppercorns, maybe a couple turmeric chunks, um, some local honey, and make yourself some turmeric tea. I also like to add just a dash of um, vanilla and a couple of scrapings of nutmeg. Um, what I've been doing, is every time I went grocery shopping, I went to that, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's a really inexpensive herbs next to all of the other herbs, banyan or something like that, and they have bags with nutmeg in them. So I buy them, they're 69 cents and there's like four nutmeg seeds in it, big ones, and they, this is gonna last me a really good long time. Um, and nutmeg is a sedative, so if you're having problems sleeping because of pain or an injury, you can make yourself a turmeric tea, throw in a couple of shavings of nutmeg, and sleep like a baby lug. So that's what you're going to do with the drying part. The other thing that you can do is preserve it. And you do that by cutting them into thin strips. This is also another way of keeping them from going bad, but it's also in um, Asian cuisine used as a palate cleanser. So they would um, just have it like we would have ketchup or something on the table as a condiment on the table, and they would just take a nibble of it in between courses or whatever, and, and um, you know how Asian food, some of it can be quite spicy. Um, this sort of calms it down. And so what you're gonna do first is take your uh, slices of ginger, put them in a bowl. It's like one and a half tablespoons of salt, one and a half tablespoons of sugar, a cup of water and a cup of rice vinegar. Um, and if you message me, I'll send you the recipe again. So you take the salt and you put it on the ginger for about half an hour. Then once it's done that, you take your handy dandy jar and you, let's see. You fill it. You can pack it tightly. You can just pack a few because it's in a brine. It's its own preservative. So it's just swimming around in there and it's going to be preserved. So there we go. Have that in there. 
and then you take the rest of the ingredients, the water, the uh, vinegar, and the sugar, which is optional, and you boil it, you know, to make a brine. And then you just pour it in there, cover it. If you wanted to, you could process it, but again, it's in its own preservative, so it doesn't really need to be processed. Cover it, stick it in the refrigerator, and there you have that. So that is ginger. Oh, I don't have any turmeric that's not been processed already. Um, John's going to bring me some home. They sell it in the produce section in like little um, styrofoam trays. Um, I was told that the reason why they get processed like that is because they it's so light that they can't weigh it. So you can't say, can I have a half a pound of um, turmeric root? Um, but everything that you did with the ginger, you can do with the turmeric and grow your own. All right, so we're going to move on. Well, let's check our little thingy first. Huh, look at that. It kind of did work. It's not, not as wrinkly as it was before. Hmm. You learn something new every day. Alrighty, so the next thing we're going to do is create some preserved lemons. Now, why would you want preserved lemons, you ask? Well, because if we can't have lemons coming up here from Florida, um, you want your own lemons. Now, Home Depot had them for sale, plants, lemon plants treats for sale last year and I wanted to get one bad but I thought maybe I'd get one for Mother's Day and I didn't so I'm getting my own today hopefully John remembers um, but in the meantime this is how you do it you cut almost all the way through this is the way that I was taught to do it before but I don't do it like this anymore because I just don't think it's worth it it says to cut them almost all the way through. Sorry, I don't know where the camera is on this thingy. I keep going for the little circle. And then stick them in the jars. But I like to just have them all cut out. Now, the way you would use this is say you're making dinner and the recipe calls for lemons and you say, Holly, I don't have any lemons. What am I gonna do? Well, you'll have your preserved lemons and you can just go take them, they're kind of on the mushier side, and you can scrape the pulp out of it and use that. Sometimes I use it with the salt that you're preserving it in because you know you need salt when you're cooking as well. Um, sometimes I rinse them off. So I'm gonna take them and put them in your jar. And what I learned the last time was that you should um, do it in layers. It's easier to get the kosher salt um, to go in between all the cracks if you're doing it in layers. So, oops, sorry, I just poured salt all over the laptop thingy. All right, so see, you're getting it in and around all of the um, little cracks and crevices. And I'll do another one. been using the lemons for um, a morning cleanse. If you juice half of a lemon and um, put some warm water, not hot, not cold, but room temperature water in a cup and you drink that before your first bathroom visit of the morning, it helps strip the toxins out of you. I see a wives tale. I don't know. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. You can't go wrong with it because it's still very good. And actually, I've also heard, and I, I, this I believe would be helpful, um, mix it with like a tablespoon of cider vinegar that you learned to make yesterday. Get my bottle of it. Uh, and a teaspoon of honey, which I showed you yesterday from my pal Jack over at Honeymoon Hill uh, Bees, up the road a piece. And that's a really good wake up beverage, you know? I mean, think of it, you've got the wonderful properties of the cider vinegar, 
we've got the vitamin C and the properties of the lemon. And then you have those gorgeous antifungal, antibacterial, antiseptic, anti-inflammatory properties of the most perfect food. And imagine starting your day every day with that, which is, you know, does have some properties for losing weight and sort of balancing out your digestive system. All right, so I'm gonna put just a little bit more in there because I wanna catch those two spots, wiggle it around. And obviously, the salt is going to be pulling more moisture out of them. So in a couple of days, in a week or so, you're gonna notice that there's more space in there. Sometimes I top it off with salt. Um, sometimes I don't, because I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. And then when you need it, you will have um, a few jar of preserved lemons. Ta -da! There you have it. And so while everybody else is freaking out about toilet paper, my suggestion is get a couple of boxes of kosher salt because you're gonna to wanna to preserve stuff if it ends up getting worse and worse. <sighs> it's a crazy world we live in. You know, it really is. But you don't have to do all of this stuff now. It's good to practice. It's good to know where the things are and it's good to know how to do it. Uh, and then you can do it if you want to, not do it if you want to. I am um, going to do more videos, um, hoping that by educating and empowering people, they won't feel so panicky or so um, helpless as to how they can take care of their families during all of this and you know what to do. It really kind of bothered me yesterday when I was thinking about uh, refilling my prescription for my level thyroxin, which is my thyroid replacement, because if I don't take that after a while, I'll die. So I don't want to do that. I got more grandbabies to see. And um, I was only allowed to get an, one more refill, which is, brings me up to six months. So it's not that bad, but it's still a scary thought. And there are other medicines that people need, and, you know, what are they gonna do? And then if somebody, I got a thing from Ally saying they were, the Federal Reserve has insisted on reducing the interest rate. And I thought, you know, all we need is for a couple of people to go really nuts on that and take all their money out of the bank. And then we have like a huge, um, you know, it's like 1930 all over again. So these are a couple of things that you can do that will come in handy, that can sit in your closet until you absolutely need it. And they have medicinal, culinary, antiseptic, cleaning. I mean, you don't need to have the fancy schmancy recipes on how to make hand sanitizer. You can use your cider vinegar. It's a strong anti disinfectant. It's as strong as Lysol. Um, there you go. But that being said, if you're in the grocery store and if you see like a, a aloe vera leaf, buy it. Put, you know, come home, process it, and stick it in the freezer. That way, if you need it, you have it. If you want to make better smelling um, apple cider vinegar or hand sanitizer, um, then you can you can use that, or you can use the oil from a lemon, because that's really where all the fragrance comes from, and the flavor is concentrated in the oil that's in the skin. So don't be afraid. We can all. Um, handle this and we can take care of ourselves and our family. My book is going to be made live again next week. Um, I felt really weird about it. I felt like I was taking advantage of a situation, but at the same time, I also was thinking, oh my gosh, this is why people, this is exactly the scenario that people needed to, to have this information that I wrote about. It's not like crazy end of the world stuff. It's, it's, uh, reasonable things that reasonable people can do and people can survive and thrive within a mile of their home very easily and I just really want everybody to learn about it. So I'm putting the book live again. Um, Anna decided to assage my feelings of guilt that for every book that is sold I'm going to donate a book to a food pantry or a library so that people who can't afford to buy it um, 
will be able to access the information or get their own copy of it. Um, and I still offer the workshop, one free workshop with the purchase of the book. So do that. If you guys want, anybody wants private um, workshops and you can gather up a bunch of people, I can do it like, you know, those painting parties. Um, you know, the more the better. The whole purpose of this is to get this information out. God created the world perfectly. It has everything we need it, need in it for sustaining ourselves. Um, and thank goodness we have not succeeded in screwing that up, but it's all here and it's all usable and I'm the gal to teach you how to use it. Okay, so thank you for joining me. If um, anybody knows how to find Go Live on an iPad on Facebook or has any um, practical assistance for like say doing podcasts, please let me know. I'm actually going to be spending some part of today learning how to make these videos better, putting them on my YouTube channel, um, The Modern Pioneer and Almanac of Natural Living, um, so they will stop being so weird looking. You should have seen the one I was trying to do live, but it kept pooping out from Comcast and it was like a comedy show, dropping stuff. All right, thank you for uh, watching. Share it, tell people. All right, bye-bye.